by Bart. So I recently came across a video by a Dr. Kiltz, um, an influencer in our space with I think 55,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, basically what he said, I checked back on this quite a few times just to be sure, don't want to misrepresent what he said, was all diseases come from plants. Do you think that's a correct kind of thought process or do you think there's more to it than that? Okay. Um, first of all, I don't know what Dr. Kilch did or did not say. I have not listened to it, so I'm going to take your word for it. I have no reason to suspect you have that wrong in any way. Let's imagine that he said that all disease comes from plants. I can get why someone would say that. I can understand why someone in our space fighting the fight that we fight on a weekly basis with the um, the other side, shall we say, why you might be inclined to just throw out something like that. Like, it seems to us pretty much like just about any disease process you could name, we could trace to your intake of plant materials. Just about is not the same thing as absolutely everyone. So if Dr. Kiltz did say absolutely every disease, without exception, is caused by plants, then obviously you'd disagree with that, and so would I, mm. if that's what he said. However, we could understand what would lead someone to sort of, in a moment of... Um, less than 100% attention to the exact details of the words, might say something like that. I wouldn't hold it against him. And I wouldn't call it a vastly inaccurate statement because he'd still be right. Most disease processes can be traced to, well, causally, most disease processes can be traced to chronic systemic inflammation. Mm. Most non-infectious diseases. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's a reasonable statement, but it's just another reminder for us all out there when we're influencing, when we're making videos, when we're saying things publicly that we really do need to be very, very disciplined and very careful about the words that we choose to use. Mm. I think. Which sense. has been my point all along. It's been mm. my point all along is that we need to be careful. So there you go. That's my take on on that. I, I wouldn't hold that one against him particularly, if indeed that's what he did say exactly. I don't know. Yeah, kind um, of touching on that point, do you think there are diseases which absolutely are due to the diet and things which just absolutely aren't? And in your experience, mm. have you found that there's been some diseases which are harder to put into remission with the diet being the focal point of the intervention? Yeah, I mean, disease is the absence of illness process of any kind, and there are all sorts of disease processes that a person might experience. Some of those are acquired diseases, and some of those are inborn diseases, or inborn alterations in genetic structure even. SNPs could, could be thought of as, as a disease if they lead to... Um, proteins being formed that are not doing the role they're supposed to properly, and there's a health side effect to that, I guess. Um, so it's it's a tricky one to un to untangle. Um, mm. Obviously, if someone has a genetic predisposition to a certain disease process, then diet as well. Diet might impact that disease process might impact those symptoms might impact that person's experience of of life you're not going to cure someone's genetics with a diet because that's not what diets do diets don't cure genetic snips that have gone wrong for example um whereas you'd look at a disease like um obesity and you'd go well that's a disease that is absolutely clearly demonstrably impacted by someone's diet mm. yeah of course well, yeah. yeah there are both I sometimes come across people with diseases which 
don't really seem to have um, a cause, like a, an origination. So one example is hemochromatosis. Like I've had clients yeah. with that before, and obviously they've done bloodletting like you'd recommend at right intervals mm -hmm. that match the blood symptom, blood test symptomology. Why do you think they come about? Because, you know, if we've evolved over so many million years to do this, that, the other, and eat mostly meat, then why is it that we have these yeah. things which just appear, you know? Okay, so why does a trait appear in a genetic line? Is that the question? Why do people? Why do some people have these? Kind of, but Gen ones which are more b bizarre. Like, you know, if our biology is designed to deal with meat mostly, then why is it yeah. someone has the, the genetic expression of, you know, hemochromatosis right. where they can't right. deal with the iron overload, perhaps? Yeah, okay, so... <sighs> The way that genetic selection works is that whatever genes are floating around and being passed on, those genes are subject to those selection pressures that, that those genes are subjected to. The person that has those genes by virtue of living and existing, by virtue of decisions that they make or people around them make it on their behalf if they're children or whatever, affect those genes and those genes then lead to either a disease process or not in a person. Mm. Okay. So no gene is a fait accompli. No, I mean, people often think about your genes as the blueprints for your body. That's not strictly correct. They are a collection of individual instructions, each individual instruction, each gene, encoding specifically and explicitly for one specific protein. And that gene is either regulated upwards or regulated downwards in terms of its activity. It's opening up, it's being read off, it's producing messenger mRNA to go off to the Golgi apparatus and to to synthesize that protein or to not do that so a gene what i'm saying is a a copy of a specific gene in a given cell is is turned on or off it's either producing or it's not mm. and that's true individually in every cell of your body as well and then the messages are sent around the body chemically and otherwise and the body makes its determination as to the status of that body as whole. Okay, right, how many of these do we need turned on? How many do we need turned off? How much of this protein do we need right now? Let's make just the right amount, not too much because it's a waste of resources, but also let's not make not enough or make one that is completely faulty and doesn't work at all because if we don't make enough of one that works, that's a problem. And if we make a whole bunch of one that doesn't work at all, then that's no help sort of thing. Mm. So at the end of the day, a person's genes can mutate spontaneously under a number of different influences, including stuff as simple as UV light, the exposure to various chemicals, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then that gene will either survive because it's useful serendipitously somehow or more often than not because it's not actively damaging. Hmm. It doesn't lead to the person's death before they can pass those genes on. There are many things like hemochromatosis that float around apparently for no reason that we're aware of necessarily. However, there will be a reason for it mm. existing at the gene pool. There will be a reason for it being selected for so that it's not wiped out hardcore. The fact that we don't necessarily know exactly what that is doesn't mean that it isn't there. It is there. Yeah. Mm. Before we understood why people got sickle cell anemia, we would have said, oh, that's just a disease that some people get. We don't know why they get that. That, that seems to be a pretty negative thing in total, because I don't know if you've ever seen someone suffering an attack of sickle cell and how how that mess, can mess up your health, etc. Mm. Um, 
so someone that had that, you, you know, you, you'd, you'd go to that person, this, this seems to be, you know, you've, you've lost the genetic um, lottery here somehow. This is very unfortunate for you. But if you then turn around and understand that maybe that person with sickle cell trait is a person of descent from somewhere in the world in the last couple of generations, say, where there are a lot of mosquitoes. And mosquitoes tend to pass on all sorts of really nasty diseases, including the one that's killed more humans apparently than anything else ever in the history of humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, and it turns out that the sickle cell trait works against that parasite so that that parasite can't infect and use that person's body, and so they live. So that's why the expression of that gene is so much higher in that population, because it was useful. Mm. But, you know, there was a period of time when we knew about sickle cell trait, but we didn't know why it was there. So we just thought of it as, as universally negative. Which is just ignorance. So what I'm saying is all these other things like hemochromatosis and whatever else, they're there for a reason. Those those genetic snips that become um, fused into someone's genetic code and passed on multi generationally. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So it's it's kind of it's really a rich tapestry that the story of genes that survive or don't survive. Okay, yeah, that do, that does make sense. Just because you know a scientific mind should understand, just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there or the thing doesn't exist. Well, uh, I understand that. Yes, lack of evidence is not necessarily evidence of lack. Hmm. Mm. Excellent. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet. 